Hi everyone. So I'm on part three of my busting myths about fallow. Um, there's three more myths I want to talk to you guys about. So I'll get right to it. Uh, number seven is that you're guaranteed complications when you have phalloplasty. Like 100% complication rate. You're going to have something go wrong. You're going to have an extended recovery. Something bad's going to happen because it's so major. That is not true. That's just, just simply not true. I've seen people that have no complications um, that recover just following the timeline as close to it as possible and have nothing. They go through their stage one, they have no problems. They go through their second stage of surgery, no problems. Um, but in talking about that, it's there's quite a lot on this topic. First of all, it there's many different complications you can have. Um, some have none, some have some. Um, some of these complications can be handled by medications, um, such as an infection. Some can heal on their own, such as a fistula, um, or some may even require surgery, such as a stricture. Few people need surgery, actually. Um, a lot of them can be handled by medications or heal on their own. Um, and some people that need surgery may need more than one surgery. That isn't as common. Um, it's more common with urethral lengthening uh, to stand to pee, those complications. But then again, the amount of kind of pursuing, fixing things or continuing with things varies on the person. First of all, differs what based on what the patient had done. So if the person had, they had urethral lengthening. Um, they might have more chance of complications than someone that doesn't because they have this added thing now. If they had vaginectomy, if they didn't, um, if they had scrotoplasty, didn't. It all, their complications are based on that. So the more you have done, uh, generally the more risk of complications you may have. Although I know people that have had everything done um, and haven't had any complications. And then some people have just one thing done and then they do have complications. So it's really hard to say. But one major thing is differs on what you have done. And then it also depends on what someone considers a complication. For me, just having an infection is something that happens with surgery. You know, you having having a wound get infected or having a UTI, that's just what happens when you put your body through surgery. It's a risk. It's not guaranteed, but it's a risk. So personally, I don't consider that a complication. It's not something that stands out to me as like a, this is something I need to be really aware of that can happen and could be frightening. Um, for some people it is. Um, so it depends on what you feel a complication might be. Some people might consider a fistula, so it's like a little hole, um, abnormal pathway of, along the urethra um, where urine can come out of. Some people may consider that a complication if it heals on their own. Some people might not. Um, I had one and it was very tiny and it healed on its own within like a week or two. I don't consider that a complication that I had because it fixed itself, it just was part of my healing. Some people might. So looking at it through that lens, if some people might say 100% rate, some people might say no, but even with those very minimal things, you're not guaranteed to have them. You could have a fine healing, you could have nothing, or you could just have really bad luck. Um, and then again, it's based on what you choose. So um, I had a stricture, so that's like, um, you have your urethra and then scarring can kind of shut it. So it's like narrowing or shutting of the urethra. So I had one of those and I had to get surgery to fix it because I had a catheter in and there's, otherwise I couldn't, couldn't uh, pee. So I needed to have something done. So I could have decided, you know what? I don't want to try and fix it. Just, um, reroute it to its old position, reroute it to somewhere else, and I just won't stand to pee. 
and then leave it at that. And then, you know, that heals and goes away. No more further complications based on that. Or I could say, I really want to try to stay in the key. I want to get this urethral lengthening fixed. I want to get rid of the stricture. And so then you may pursue a surgery to fix it. And that surgery of fixing it might have its own complications. You know, it could have more UTIs or it could have the surgery could not work. You could develop another stricture. Then say you had that happen. You want to try again. And you want to try again. You see what I mean? Like you can keep having complications depending on how far you go to try and fix something if your body isn't allowing it to happen. So personally, I chose, I'll get more into it in another video, but I let myself have one fix for the stricture and if it didn't work, I was going to reroute it and not continue because I didn't want to have complication after complication um, if my body just didn't accept it. Some people may go for many repair surgeries, so it's up to that. Um, that's one factor. And now I'll kind of talk about the main uh, complications that are more common or that you would hear of or think of. So I'd say the major complication that you would get from having phalloplasty isn't actually from the phalloplasty itself. It's from a subset of that. It's from the urethral lengthening. It's from extending the urethra to the tip of the penis to stand to pee. That's what the, causes the majority of issues in people because you're having to use um, tissue that you already have down there and then you're having to use like a skin graft to extend that. And when you're using skin, you have the potential to scar, you have the potential for things not to heal. And so the most common ones are fistulas, which is like the abnormal pathway um, from the urethra that doesn't go all the way to the end, which urine can get out of. And strictures. So the strictures is the, the narrowing or the shedding of the urethra. So with the fistulas, pretty much everyone I've talked to that's had fallow has had one. I'd say 80-90% have had it heal on their own that I've talked to. This isn't, these aren't statistical numbers that I know for sure. There's reports that you can look up. Um, my surgeon, Dr. Crane, his, his team did a report. I think Santucci was, my other surgeon was involved in that. Um, but this is just what I gathered from talking to people. So most of them healed on their own. I had one too, heal on its own. It's very simple. Um, some may need surgery. I haven't really heard of someone that's had surgery for it and then had it open again or have had continu continuous uh, complications from that. Fistulas are pretty minor seeming to me. Um, then there's strictures. These are more ominous. Uh, they're still not that bad depending on how the person's experiencing it. When you have a skin graft of any kind, it has the potential to scar. The scarring, as on me, can kind of like, you have this, it can kind of build up, right? And then close or narrow. And so that can be treated by dilating. I know a couple of people that have had fallow that just dilate. So they just insert something like, this is the pathway, they just insert this in, that kind of opens it back up so then things can go out. Um, and sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't, and people need surgery to repair it. Some people may need a two-step procedure to repair it, a one-step, they can use, you know, mouth tissue, um, or they can use another skin graft, or they just cut it out, there's many things. But mostly, those are the most common complications, especially if you have urethral lengthening. Um... As far as like my own personal experience with talking to people, I know people that have had no urethral lengthening complications at all, and then I know um, people that have had strictures. They're not always super apparent. They don't always cause harm. Some people just have some dripping um, after they pee. Some people just have more UTIs because of it, so it's not always a complete block. Then there's also <clears throat> um, other other complications you can get with other parts of the body um, related to it, not just urethral lengthening. So your wound healing can be slowed. Um, you know, your your graft, your donor site might not close completely. On time, might be a little delayed. You can have infections such as uh, with your urethra, so UTIs, or in the wound, wounds that are healing, because things are healing. Infections are um, actually 
something that's to worry about in any kind of surgery, so it's not just specific to fallow. Same with wound healing. Those are pretty much risks any, in any surgery. Um, and I wouldn't say they're like super apparent. It just depends on your body and your own healing. Um, and then you can have poor blood flow, which is also to do with wound healing. So <clears throat> you could have like some of the tissue um, coming off, turning a little black. That I was really worried about this when it happened to me. I had some at the end get necrotic, so like dying off. Um, it's not a lot, it was just a little bit, and it's just, that happens, that happened with my arm, a little bit of tissue came off too, they just debride it, take it away, new tissue can grow. It's not that huge. Um, very rarely, I think I've only heard of two people ever having this that I talked to out of many people, um, major tissue death. So this is where like the blood flow is not good. Um, they might need you to get into emergency surgery just to fix the connection so you don't lose the penis, but this is very rare. Um, it is a risk, but like I said, very rare. I haven't really heard of it happening, and there were reasons for these things happening, like being far away from the surgeon's office, not getting back in time to reestablish the blood flow, or just having um, poor blood flow in general going into surgery. And then there's also complication, maybe considered one, maybe not, um, to do scarring. So this can lead back to the strictures. So like hypertrophic scarring, very aggressive, thickened scarring. I would show you, but it kind of um, I covered it with the tattoo. So basically like if you have scarring, it's supposed to be like this, it might end up being this thick. So that can happen. It can kind of warp the look a little bit maybe. Um, I have some scarring like that on the underside of mine, um, and that just kind of it looks thicker, it changes the look a little bit. Not so worrisome for me. You can also have like something else in regards to a complication with scarring. Your glands can flatten. Uh, this happens to some people, they can rebuild it. Um, I don't think this, I think this happens less when they stage it out as um, they do your glands later on because you have better blood flow but that's easily fixed and then the last thing I wanted to touch on as far as complications is that really it's a weigh your pros versus cons kind of thing so if you want if you really want to stand to pee you're willing to take the risk of that you might have some complications with your urethra lengthening you might not for me, it was something I wanted to take the chance on because it was important to me to try because I really wanted that. So I opened myself up to more complications. Sorry, my nose is just really itchy. Um, but then you can also have, maybe some people it's not so important to, so they don't want to risk those complications. Um, and then just in general, like a lot of the things I hear is a lot of people don't want to do fallow because they're terrified of the complications. But what I think is there's complications in every surgery. And sometimes you really, it's not the complications that dictate whether you would do it or not. It's how badly you want it. So like, yeah, I was scared. All these bad things could happen. I could have all these unknown complications popping up, but I needed it. I needed to have this done to feel whole. I needed to have this, the, every step of these done. And so for me, it was worth the unknown that I might have something pop up that I have to deal with. I might not. And all in all, um, a lot of these complications, if not all, are pretty like manageable. Medications, minor, they heal on their own, or maybe surgery. But uh, a lot of them aren't lifelong. And I knew that. And I knew maybe I'd have to struggle for a year, maybe a little bit longer, maybe a little bit less. But for me, it was worth the lifetime of having um, having had phalloplasty. So that's just something to consider too in regards to it being scary. I did originally want to get uh, metoidioplasty, which is a whole other type of bottom surgery. It's a lot lot less um, OR time, a lot less time that you're you're under and a lot less things that can possibly come up that can result in complications. But I was only making that decision because I was scared of the complications and not because it's what I wanted in the end. 
And so I came to the conclusion, I just have to go for it. And I'm just gonna risk it, and I'm, I'm happy, even though I had some issues along the way. I have a lifetime of feeling whole now. So, um, but that's not to say that complications can dictate the choice for some people. And that may scare some people off, or it may um, just, they may be happy with a different outcome. So, all, it's up to the person. I'll speed through the last few because these ones are shorter and I've already been talking a while. So the next um, myth is <clears throat> the next myth is that it's too expensive. I uh, can't pay for it. I'll never be able to get it. This is what I thought. This is what a lot of people I know talk, they think. And it's just a lack of not knowing what the options are. Um, I'm from Canada, so it's different from where I am. I know a lot of people in these groups, uh, these bottom surgery groups, phalloplastic groups I've had talk and talked to are from the USA. And in the US, um, it's different, insurance works different, um, different healthcare system. In Canada, we have universal healthcare, so uh, the government pays for our surgeries. They're completely covered, um, though we do have less options. So I'm from BC and in BC, we have the BC team, which is new. Um, they weren't there when I was going through the procedure. Um, and then they have Montreal, um, who does it. And you get to choose out of those two. They used to have out of country funding. Um, so they'd send us to certain recommended surgeons in the States, such as Dr. Crane, uh, Dr. Chen, I think Dr. Burley. Um, and so I had a bit of a choice there, but that's not something that's going on anymore. So that's why I went to the States for mine. Um, I don't know much about the, the US and how they do it, but I do know that insurance companies and the surgeons have to be like in network to the insurance companies, something like that. And so there's there may be a little bit more choice in surgeons and there may be a little bit of cost depending on if you meet your deductible. I'm just throwing words out there that I've heard from people. so really should uh, speak to someone in the US if you're from there because I don't know but other countries too I've heard people from and they have funding or their insurance uh, covers it so it's really worth exploring because it is pretty accessible um, in many different countries and yeah so the last myth I want to talk about is um, people saying that it won't feel like part of them it won't feel like their own um, organ. It won't feel like their own penis. It'll feel like their arm. And this is not something I was concerned about ever, but I'm very happy to report that it does not feel like my arm. First of all, I think it would be kind of hard for it to feel like my arm considering it's in a new location. It's hooked up in a new way. It looks like looks like a penis, you know, like and it, it acts like one, like, and I have different sensations there. You can have like erotic sensation there. You don't have that with your arm. Um, it's totally different feeling. Um, it just doesn't strike me as my arm at all anymore. I mean, my arm's here. It's not. It's not here. And it right away I connected to to it as what it's supposed to be, not as another part of me. It has its own heartbeat, pulse, like its own sensations, the glands, the look, like that all just contributes to it being what it's supposed to be um, as part of me. It's integrated complete, completely. And what really helped me connect more as well um, to it is getting the tattooing to help uh, change the color, to help kind of bring it closer to the color of the surrounding skin and um, not just be all one pale color like my arm was getting the, those veins t tattooed on and it pinker in certain areas that's really helped me feel more like more connected and more like it's what it's supposed to be so and it is what it is so anyways that's the end of my video those are all the myths that I've encountered talking to pre-op people and what I had as a pre-op person as well so I hope that this gives some information so people are, they know more about fallow, phalloplasty, and 
if the, if you aren't seeking it yourself, if you're giving information to another community member, trans community member, or if you're just caring for someone or an ally, I hope that this provides uh, information to you all. And yeah, okay.